equals the number of heads when you flip three fair coins. And we basically realize we can summarize all the results of that particular random situation by the little chart called the probability distribution of the random variable chart. And that embodies basically two, sort, two columns of numbers, the range of the random variable, and one of the possibilities for this particular random situation, which in the case of flipping three coins is zero to three. And what is the chance of that happening? And we've worked out those probabilities about five or six different ways by now, by the counting method, by doing it physically, or the Monte Carlo method, by the logic method, by the binomial formula. Either way you look at it, the answer at this point is, in the case of three fair coins, 50-50, this was one out of eight, this was three out of eight, this was also three out of eight, and one out of eight for a grand total of one, or eight out of eight. And that's just more or less what we're up to. But now we're going to take this, even though the book starts off with this chapter, with this, this thing, we're, we're now, we're now up to it. This information, can be, we can squeeze out a little more relevant, in fact, important relevant information from this chart. The first thing is we can change it into a picture. The picture in this case is going to be called a spike diagram. For obvious reasons, you'll see why it's called a spike diagram. And basically, along the x-axis, you put the x numbers, in this case, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Along the y-axis, you put the probabilities. Usually it's f of x, but now it's going to be the probabilities, which in this case, 1 out of 8, 2 out of 8, 3 out of 8. And basically, you erect the spike representing the probability of getting exactly x equals 0, x equals 1 is 3 out of 8, x equals 2 is 3 out of 8, x equals 3 is something like that. So this little picture is a, essentially the exact same information contained over here which in turn is the exact same information contained by a mathematical formula. x equals x is n choose x. You have a choice. If I told you, write, out, write down the equation of, well, write down the information we know about flipping three coins, you can either write it out this way most explicitly. If you prefer a picture, make, it out, make a picture this way. And if you prefer an equation, you have an equation this way. So three ways of saying more or less the same thing. Sometimes you don't have an equation because it's just too complicated, but in this case, we do have to have the binomial equation. But once we have this information about the random variable, a very common question, a very important question, hopefully you'll see that from the homeworks, how important this could possibly be in real life business applications, is to answer the question, okay, sometimes we flip a coin, three coins and we get two hits. Sometimes we get one hit. Sometimes we get three hits. Sometimes we get no hits. On the average, how many heads do you get? And that question, on the average, which is a really simple way of saying it, is called the mean, that's a fancy way of saying it, and the really fancy way is calling it the E of X, which is called the E stands for expected value of random variable X. When you see E of X, what it really stands for is the expected value, I hope you're writing this down, expected value of random variable X. And we have another symbol for it, it's called mu. Now, mu is used for the symbol of the average of a population, but in this context, if we're talking about an average of a whole, all the possibilities of a random variable, so we borrow the symbol for the, for the population average. Now, before I show you a formula for it, or another way of getting the answer, can somebody guess the answer? You're flipping three coins, how many heads are you going to get on the average? Well, let's take a simpler example. You're flipping four coins, some heads, some tails. How, and you did, let's say, for example, you did four coins. In fact, you were supposed to do this for today's spinner assignment. We'll find out if anybody did it. You actually flip. You flip you know, uh, x equals number of heads when you flip four, not three, still fair, meaning 50-50 coins. And you're supposed to use the rand between method to physically do it, but even common sense should come up with the same answer. So if you do it, sometimes you're going to get three heads, then two heads, then two heads then four heads, then two heads, then one head, then zero heads, then two heads, then two heads, then two heads, and three heads, and four heads, and one heads, and two heads, and three heads, and two heads. This is what you should get if you did the grand between. So the question is, if you took the average of all these things, get the average, which is, you know, not, it's not the theoretical average, it's the practical average, what do you think the average is going to be? Someone who has, yes, Tiffany? Yeah. Common sense things, this should be around two, because you expect to get two heads on the average, two tails on the average, for a total of four coins. So if you understand that, not just memorizing it, no, we're actually understanding it, the next step is, well, what about our example, where there's only three coins? How many heads do you expect to get on the average? Tiffany, you want to say again? Three coins, how many heads do you expect to get on 
because you're directly there. The answer is one and a half. And I say, how can you get one and a half? Well, it is an answer. But if I told you, I have two children in my family. Someone, you have three children. You have no children. One child, and besides yourself. To take the average of the whole class, you can get an answer like 1.3 or 1.7 or 2.1. It doesn't have to be a whole number. So in this case, the average will turn out to be, by common sense, exactly 1.5. I mean, how many heads you're going to get? X is the number of heads. So how many heads you expect to get? I expect to get one and a half heads, one and a half tails for a total of three coins. There's no reason to expect any number besides that. Now, did anybody do the rand between? I mean, you know, the 8,000, dragging it across four times or five times and dragging it down 8,000 times. Anybody do that yet? You did it? Great. Okay. David, what did you get? So did you get, did you, can I, do you have it? Something uh, up here? Or, uh, what did you get? Did you do the average of all those numbers? Yeah. No? What did it come out to? 